In the suburbs of Madrid, I'm visiting a company called Talgo. Oh, hello, Chris. Carlos? Since 1942, these guys have been innovating their way to become world leaders in train design. The two founders created the company in the early days of Franco's dictatorship. From the start, their trains were designed for speed and style, with futuristic aerodynamics. Trains that could change gauge to cross international borders, and even their own high-speed tilting technology. Now they're building Spanish bullet trains that look like huge duckbill platypuses with long, glossy tails. But what they're really keen to show me is their rolling assemblies and um, the wheels. OK, so, Chris, this is where we actually manufacture the rolling assemblies of the Talgo trains. Yeah. And this is what makes Talgo's technology so very different. Well, so, explain, because I'm a real layman in this. I mean, the wheels are wheels to me. OK, so the wheel is independent. Yeah. And we do not use traditional axles, which you would normally see across the world. So a straight bar across. What's good about that, then? What, what is so that our wheels can actually optimise the condition of the rail head at very high speeds. So it reduces weight, reduces maintenance costs. So a lot of it's lightness, actually. So if you're doing 200 mile an hour or whatever, I lock on the bends and everything. You want, you want maximum safety, right? Of course, yeah. I've never bought a whole train, but what do you pay for a train? In, in sterling, around 20 to 25 million pounds. Even better the prices than that, depending on the quantities. I don't want to buy one. I'm just, <laughs> no, I'm just interested. I wouldn't have a clue how much. Out in the yard, John's keen to show me the latest high-speed train that's been built for Saudi Arabia. That's pretty smart, isn't it? It's a beautiful train. It is actually it's stunning. The train's been designed, complete with independent wheels, for a new line to carry pilgrims across the Saudi deserts to Mecca. So, Chris, welcome to our Saudi Arabia trains. It's pretty smart, isn't it? The Saudis are like this. Look at this. This is amazing. This is like receiving a new car, isn't it? All wrapped up. What sort of speed does this do? Up to 350 kilometres an hour. 350, that's about 200 mile an hour. Oh, Obviously, the train has been designed and for dealing with the harsh desert conditions. 55 degrees centigrade in sand storms. We've had to look at the fixtures and fixings, additional filters, uh, different paint technology, all to deal with those conditions. So, who's the boss now? It's quite a turnaround from importing steam trains from the British 150 years ago. And now the big finale. I get to meet Jose Luis Lopez Gomez, one of the men who invented gauge-changing technology back in 1969. What did they used to do when they wanted to take trains from the broad gauge to the standard gauge? What did they used to do? Bueno, esta operación eh, se tardaba del orden de dos horas. Eh, y además hacían falta entre 10 y 12 personas. Yeah. Eh, es una, era una operación muy lenta y complicada. You and your young team completely changed all that. What, what do you do now? Bueno, esta es una instalación para cambio automático de dos anchos de vía. Uh -huh. Ancho estándar europeo y ancho estándar rem. What I'm about to see happens in sheds around Spain about 30 times a day. Allowing trains to use both the old broad gauge tracks and the modern high speed ones. But it's coming in there now. As the train enters the shed on Iberian gauge, the wheels are lifted off the track, automatically unlocked, pushed 23 centimetres closer together, relocked, and dropped down off the standard gauge track. Simples. That used to take a couple of hours, the whole thing took less than a minute. And nobody on that train will have had a clue that anything happened. Todo esto a 15 kilómetros por hora. That's good. That's good. It's so simple. So simple. 